Hey everyone, I need a couple of new batteries for my cordless tools because some of my old ones are starting to lose capacity. So today I'm going to show you how I rebuild a DeWalt battery and can do it much cheaper than buying a new one. And then I'll also show you how I use one of these cheap kits you can get off eBay, places like that and you can build them from scratch. I'm sure this could be done with other brand batteries and it's probably very similar. I've just never done it so I can't really comment on it. The 18 volt and the 20 volt, they're the same thing. It's just an advertising thing what they're allowed to get away with in different countries. Next thing is I always use original high quality cells. These are Samsung 25Rs. These will build five amp hour batteries in this configuration, but whatever the make is, whatever they use, that's what I would use. So high quality cells, they'll last a lot longer, they're safer. And before we really get going, I'll just mention that working with lithium ion batteries can be really dangerous. You can set them on fire quite easily, you can destroy the cells, you can even make them explode. So if you don't know what you're doing, it's not something to take lightly and just jump in. You really need to know what you're doing before you get into this stuff. I have 10 cells, which is what one five amp hour battery is. This was actually a three amp hour that I'm just gonna upgrade to a five amp hour. The internal components can handle that. Maybe not all of them could. I happen to know that this one is fine, but that's another thing to double check. Okay, the first thing to do with the cells is to make sure that they're all in the same charge state. So I'll just take a multimeter and go down and test each one and make sure they're similar. If they're too dissimilar, you need to throw them on a battery charger and get them pretty close because if you install them and they're slightly different, it can actually drain the cells between the different batteries and you end up with reduced life and reduced capacity. So it's really worth just making sure they're all in the same charge state. So these all test out as the same, but there can be even slight variations that the multimeter doesn't pick up on. So what I like to do is balance them first. So first I'll make sure all the batteries are facing the same direction take some of this pure nickel tape and I'm going to apply it to both sides so that all the negatives are connected and all the positives are connected. And by connecting them with this wire, they can all adjust to each other. So if there's any variance in voltage across these batteries, just connecting all of the positives and all of the negatives and leaving it to just sit for a while is going to allow those batteries just to balance out and become even. I'll cut a piece of this nickel long enough to cover all of them. And then just to hold it in place, I'm just gonna tape the nickel across. Now I'll come back and I'll do the same on the back side here. I'm just gonna put two pieces of wood on either side and just clamp them together. These batteries should all be connected and they're balancing as we speak. So depending on how different the voltages were will determine how long it takes to balance. These all tested out as the same, so it really shouldn't take very long at all. Really, I could skip this step because they do test out as the same voltage, but it's really easy to do. All I have to do is wait overnight. So what I'll do is I'll leave this and I'll come back and finish this up tomorrow. Okay, so it's been about a day and a half, so these batteries should be really well balanced and ready to put together as a battery. I'll save this nickel strip because I can use it in the batteries. And the first one that I'll put together is just rebuilding this original battery. First, I'm just gonna take it apart and these four screws should just come apart really easily. And then the top will just lift off. So I'll just set this top aside. The spring can go with that. Now I need to basically re just remove this inside bit and I'm going to be really careful because I don't want to damage any of the cells as it comes out. The little battery monitor here in the front should just pop out and then really carefully so I don't damage the actual cells. I'm just going to start prying it out with a screwdriver. This is one place where you could actually do quite a bit of damage, um, breaking into a cell, shorting it, getting electrocuted. So this part is just super slow and careful. And I'm also being careful not to touch the positive and negative sides at the same time. The bottom is just the piece of the case. And then this is the actual battery. There's the connection ports here and a BMS that just monitors the battery and assists with charging. There's the charge meter on the front and then 
there's a few different leads here. So this, 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 and this will all assist the BMS sort of checking in on each cell bank and allowing consistent charging throughout all the cells. And then these two big leads are your main power leads that you're actually taking power off of these two side ports. Okay, I've got the soldering iron plugged in and it's heating up. And as soon as it's hot enough, I'm gonna start detaching these points. I'll start with the main two power leads and just gonna be super careful because heat and batteries do not get along never want to put too much heat into a battery because that's when bad things happen so just really carefully go around heat up the solder and then remove these wires okay so that's the two main power leads and I'll just get them out of the way then I'm just gonna disconnect these four smaller monitoring wires Okay, so now I'm really ready to start disassembling it. This is what's known as a 5S2P battery. So it's five cells in series and two cells in parallel. So essentially the bottom row and the top row are five cells in series, and then they're connected in parallel also. So first what I'm gonna do is go ahead and cut all the parallel connections, which is these three on each side. And I'm gonna use diagonal cutters and tin snips, depending on which piece it is. So in here, I can just go in and just sever that. Then for the bigger one, I might need the snips. So again, this is a set of five in series, and that basically multiplies the volts. So 3.7 times five, and then you stack two of those on top of each other, putting them in parallel, and that increases the capacity. So three amp hour, four amp hour, five amp hour, depending on how many stacks you put in, will just continue to increase the capacity of the battery. Now what I need to do is carefully remove these cells from the plastic cases. And again, everything I'm doing, I'm just being super careful because I don't want to create any circuits accidentally. Okay, so that is just one chain of the old cells. And this is what I'm after really is this plastic case. And I can do the same to this side. First what I'll do is just stack the cells back into these and then I'll start making the connections. I'll start with one positive here to connect to the positive wire and just slide that in. And then they alternate, which leaves you with a negative at the end of the chain here, and that connects to the negative line there. Okay, so those are all lined up in the right place. I'll take the bottom piece, orient it the right way, and just stick it on. Okay, when those are together, then I'll just drop in the cells to match the same pattern on the top. So now I just need to connect these. Basically, each parallel set will get connected on both sides and then the chain will connect in series so these two will connect and then these two will connect and then these two will connect and then these two will connect so this is just a small spot welder it charges off a usb so it's not even super powerful but it uses capacitors to charge up and then you can just do a small spot weld. Theoretically, these could be soldered together, but again, it's introducing a lot of heat into the cells. Batteries do not like heat. So uh, spot welding is a much better and safer way to go about it. So it's just got these two leads that get placed on the metal and then a foot pedal that you just tap and it shoots a spot weld through. I've also built this little platform that I use for doing this. It kind of holds everything in place. I just 3D printed these. I slide this in and just keep it in place with a little bungee cord. And then I can plug in the leads. These cups kind of keep them out of the way. So I'll just cut a piece of the nickel tape long enough to span both sides of the parallel cell. Just hold it down and that's the spot weld. And I'll do four points on each. As you can see, that is really on there. And you're putting minimal heat into the battery itself. I'll just run down all the parallels and connect them. 
at the end here where this end it needs to connect to the negative. I will run this a bit long. I'll actually just connect it very long there. That way I can fold it, just bring it over and cut it here because then it's long enough to reach this negative and I can solder them together there. I'll do the same parallel connections on this other side. And then again with this one, I'm gonna go a little bit long so that the positive wire can reach over and solder onto it. So next I need to connect it all in series. So the positive here enters this side and then it snakes its way down. So I'll connect these two, then these two, then these two, and then these two. So then I skip one and I connect these two. So the last thing I need to do on this side is just have a little tab that comes up on these two bits to be able to reach and solder in the BMS lines. Just use a sh short little bit. So I'll just lift this wire up out of the way, tuck that in under, and then I can spot weld it there. And I'll be able to come back and solder that on after. Okay, so now I'll just flip it and do the same to this side. Bearing in mind, the power comes in here, so I'm not connecting these two. It comes in, down, and then, so I need to join these two and these two. So again, I just need two little tabs here to connect the BMS to. So I'll just lift that up and tuck this under. Now I just need to re-solder all these six points. I'll do the actual power leads last so I can get the spot welder out of the way. Okay, so this is hot and I will go ahead first and connect the four BMS wires. Now I'll do the positive last. I am gonna trim this back just a bit so that it cannot get close enough to that. BMS wire to ever touch. Okay, and then last is the positive here. So the next thing I need to do is just attach this little cover plate with some hot glue. This battery is about done and ready to be reassembled. First, I'm just gonna slide the pack down in and then I can just slide this into place. Face plate also then just slides in right in front. The spring just sits on that. And then the top cover should just slide down on top of all of it. Just screw these back in. I'll just plug this in. There you go. So this is effectively a brand new five amp hour battery. You know, there's a little bit of wear and tear on the components, but the cells are brand new, high quality, and this cost me about half. This cost me about 25 bucks, whereas a brand new one of these would cost me about 50 bucks. And this is upgrading it from a three to a five in this specific case. So next I'll put together the battery kit. So I'll bring the spot welder back. I got this on AliExpress. I think I probably paid four or five bucks for it. Uh, you can find them on eBay sometimes, but they're pretty cheap. And they should come with everything you need except the cells to put together the battery. So the good thing with these is that you don't actually have to take apart the old DeWalt battery. You can just assemble it and you're good to go. The downside is that they're probably cheaper quality. Uh, the plastic's fine, but the BMS, the wiring, these things, the, all the, the electrical components are probably cheaper and not quite as good. But as long as I use high quality cells, I'm happy with these and they work great. So the first thing I'll do is stack all the cells in this holder. I need to make sure that it's orientated correctly. So the BMS, it has two pins here in the back that will fit into two holes here. The battery monitor slots in right here. And then that tells me that the positives start here and the negatives end here. So on this end, negatives up. And then the single tab down at the end, because that's the end of the series chain, 
two of these squares here because the power will flow through to the next in the series. From here, I can go ahead and weld all these together. And I'll just work my way down. Then I can just flip the whole thing over and do the same. The beginning of the series is on this side, so it looks just the same. So the cells are all welded in place, and now I can go ahead and get the BMS attached. I'm just gonna go through and label the voltages of each point because that will help me solder on the correct wire from the BMS. Starting at the negative end, this is four volts, and this is eight. Just working my way up, this is 12, 16, and at the end, it would be the full 20 volts. I'm just gonna go ahead and add a bit of solder at each connection point, because it'll make the actual assembly easier. Then here at the top, on these two tabs, I'll add a bit more. So next I'll stick the BMS on. The battery monitor will just run underneath it up to the front here, and the pins just slot into the holes and then it's mounted. And then this will slot into the case on the front here. I'll leave the two main leads till the end and I'll connect these right in there. It lists the voltage corresponding to that wire and that corresponds to the voltage so that the BMS can balance the cells properly. So I'll just start with the four, which is this yellow one in this case. And this is where it's nice to have just added the solder already. So then I'll find the 12, which is this white one. Let's see the eight is this green one. And then I'll just double check, but yes, the blue wire here is 16. And these are the main power leads, so they do want to be soldered really well. So that's it, all the connections are done. This can just drop in here. The actual monitor with button just slots in, and then this sort of just decal thing slots in right in front of it. So that's just on there like that. So then the top, I can sort of pinch that to hold it in place, and I need to get the spring to seat right over. There's a pin right there on the yellow bit. So that's working. And then just flip it over and screw it together. So I can test it, it's working great. So 55 bucks for two brand new five amp hour batteries. They would normally cost probably about a hundred bucks retail. Even just doing one of them, I paid off the spot welder. And so anytime my older batteries starting to slow down, I just rebuild them and they're basically brand new and last me another several years. So if you found this entertaining or helpful, really appreciate a like and a subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, throw them down below and I'll try to help. If you have any suggestions of things you'd like to see, you can also throw those down there and I'll try to get around to those. Again, if anyone was gonna try this, you've gotta really know what you're doing and be really careful because you could electrocute yourself, cause a fire, they can even explode. So it's not something to take lightly, but if you know what you're doing, it's a great way to save some money, it's fun, and then you end up with some brand new batteries. Until next time, thanks for watching.